welcome to Conquering Mount Scratmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with block five of the psychedelic snowflake that everybody is uh, doing this so long and it's been lots of fun. Now I have added a bonus block and that bonus block will appear after block six. So you, you've got to wait one more month to get that. So don't be searching in the show notes for the bonus block. But here you will find the PDF for this block five in our show notes. Now, before we get any further on this, let's not forget our shout out because we will. Future Cat from New Zealand is having such a great time on their channel. It is just awesome. And I have a project coming up that includes their artistic ability. I am just like so thrilled, but I can't tell you anymore because I don't know if I have permission to tell you more, but I'm excited about it. So I've got two other YouTubers that are also involved with this. So I'm just like, oh, yay, this is going to be so much fun. But that, so her, the link for Future Cats um, YouTube channel will be in the show notes below. I'm so excited. I actually forget what I'm talking about. Along with our Facebook group. Our Facebook group is growing rapidly. It's a warm, welcoming community. We're having fun. We're asking questions, sharing pictures, doing fabric swaps, virtual sew rooms. It's fun. I am can't believe all the community chats that are going on right now in that group. And we're all just having a great time, right? So if you're part of the Facebook community and you're looking for a warm, welcoming quilting group, come on and join us where we are having too much fun over there. The other thing you're going to find is our Zoom so link that we have on the first Saturday of each month. And but the, the dates are posted so you can mark them on your calendar as to when they come. That is those so dates are so much fun. We're having a great time talking with quilters from all over. It's not just Canada and the U.S. It's like there's people from everywhere. So you never know who's going to show up in those. And they're they're great. They're just absolutely great. Another thing you're going to find is I do speaking engagements for free for guild, quilt guilds or groups of quilters. I don't charge anything, but I only do them over Zoom. So if your quilt group or your quilting guild has, is looking for speakers, please let them know that I'm available and that I charge nothing. I hope to get to stay for the show and tell, but you never know with timing and everything else whether I can. So if you're, if you're, it's just a lot of fun that I'm having talking with other quilting groups from all over. That is just wonderful. Share, like, and subscribe. That helps us out with our analytics. And it's, it's just been a blessing where we are, where we started from and where we're, we're now at. So anyways, come on in. We've got a really simple block five for you to work with. Okay, we're at the sewing machine. Now I have done my tracing wheel and I've got the little lines. I'm hoping you can see already so I know where all the pieces go. Right, so that's always a really handy trick. It not only helps you where your placement is of your pieces, but it helps you fold the paper, right? Which is kind of important too. Also have close at hand is scotch tape, you know, your stitch ripper, a small scissor, all those kinds of things are all useful. Now, I do not sew on my blacks until I'm ready to start assembling the quilt, right? Because I want to play with these pieces because I rotate them. So I'm not really sure where that black's going to go on until I make my final decision, right? So I know I, you know, once you guys have decided, you know, to sew on your black so it goes like this, but I don't. So, and that's just me. That's my little, little quirk. I like to leave myself open with options. So let's get to the sewing here now. So I want to fold my paper. And I thought I was doing the other six. I was like, well, this is the easiest one. I should have probably started with that one first. So as we're doing this, we want to put, now we see where the line is folded. And we just want to move this up there, just like so. And then we want to take a first black piece. And we want to make sure we have good coverage in both directions. I got dozens of these black triangles. And I figured, okay, I'm going to use them in this project. So get sewing this together. There we go. And you want to take it and then hold it so it drops down a few times in the same place. And that will create a knot for your 
your quilts, right? Like a knot at the end. And there we go. Put this down through. Okay. Now, so you got that. So now we're just going to turn that over like so. Just, I'm figure pressing. Now, if you were doing a show quilt or whatever, you would actually go through, take the time to, you know, press each piece. Because you get into a rhythm of so press trim so press trim now i'm just gonna line up my ruler with paper and i've got a quarter inch seam i'm just gonna make my first little trim this is pet bed material so and now i'm gonna line up another black piece just to make sure i've got enough coverage yes i do and i'm gonna put that under the sewing machine just like so Okay, there we go. Now we go quarter past, and then you stop by putting, you know, the, the pieces, the piece goes up and down a few times, right? So you create that little knot. Yeah, this was, as I was sewing this, I was sitting there thinking, well, they'll either consider it a break from the harder ones, or they'll go, wow, she messed up the way she was going to present them. But I thought, yeah, this one I was sewing, it was like, this is the easiest one. Why didn't I present it first? So we've got this now pretty secure. So what we're going to do is we're going to line it up for four. Now you can trim both four and five at the same time, right? Trim for it. So I'm just going to lay this down right on my quarter inch. There we go. Trim that off. A little more pet bed. I'm actually, since I've been sewing down here in Tucson, right? Because we got here, what, the end of November, mid-November. I'm surprised at how much string and little bits I have already created. So I was just like, wow. Okay. So I am now going to put four on. Now, I have my pieces all lined up as well. And that helps with, that helps with, you know, just the speed in which you're doing it. Now, this one kind of angles in a bit. So you want to make sure you've got good coverage on this side, but you want to make sure you're going to have like more than a quarter inch on that side, which I do. So let's just get this lined up and sewn in. Yeah. So by the time this gets aired, I'm hoping to be able to tell you what Future Cat and I are going to be working on because we're also working with Michelle from Bits and Pieces and Kelly from Kelly's Cruises. But I don't know if I have permission yet to tell you exactly what we're going to be working on. So I don't know if I can say or anything yet or not. Now we're gonna lay down the next piece. Number five is also this orange color. And I'm just gonna lay this out just like so. Make sure I have coverage here. And I'm going past these lines here, right? Because that, that guarantees my coverage. Okay, let's get this one. And we're gonna go all the way over six. Hold it so you make a knot. Yeah. I'm excited. I've been designing and trying to come up with some very original fun blocks. And yeah, it's been, you know, it's going to be one of those cute little sew alongs that the four of us are doing. I just think I'm excited. So, but anyways, I probably shouldn't talk to you about stuff like that. If I can't, if I'm not sure I can talk about it yet. So, but that's just between you and me. You, you can don't tell anybody else, right? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to go back and just going to make sure that line is good. Yes, it is. Okay. So you cut your quarter inch. Now you can use your add a quarter ruler now. I do not have one here. I have three in ho at home. I did not feel it necessary to buy yet another one. So I thought, okay, yeah, this we can make do with a ruler. Many people may do with rulers like this. I mean, add a quarter rulers makes it faster, but that's it. Okay, next piece here is going to be number six. So I guess the easiest way to explain this is the, the even numbers are here, the odd numbers are here. So once we get past a certain point, it's very easy 
Okay, so we got good coverage. Just gonna roll that under. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, some of you have been asking too for the about the charity quilt that's behind me. When we start the show, I um, got some fabric from um, one friend, and it was animals, and it was on the print was on a diagonal. So I thought, oh, I could cute make a cute quilt with fussy cutting. And when I started fussy cutting, it was like not all the faces were equal. So I'm like, oh no. Okay, let's get. Number seven sewn on, so we just go past a little bit, and there we go. Okay, here. You know, this one is nice, it's not just like one piece, you don't have to sew anything together, all you now have to do is trim it and make it look good. Okay, so let's trim our black, so let's get to the since we're, we put on seven, let's get eight trimmed up. And we're going to trim both sides at once because this block is symmetrical and it looks good. It's a simple block. It only takes four colors too. So if you're, some of you are like, I don't know what color to put on next. Just, you know what, with this, there's so much going on. It, you could either like limit your palette colors to, you know, let's say three or four colors that you like. Or you can do something different. So let's put on eight next. And okay, when I'm making all six at once, I have all six of this size coming, right? Like, so I've laid it out so in the order I'm putting it on. And that helps to not get me confused as to which one I'm working on next. So cutting for me is one thing, and sewing is something else. But yeah, then I don't get confused and I don't start making mistakes when I, if I'm tired because that's that's when you make your mistakes is when you're tired okay you know this is coming along in record time okay <laughs> yeah I should have probably presented this one first that was probably one of the easier ones to do okay let's get okay let's start from this side if I make a mistake and have to pick it out I will show you guys because I think it's important but you know how to fix this. Okay, here we go. Now with the extra one I make for my sample, out of my sample, I make into an orphan block. And it will be used in a charity quilt. So some of you are wondering, why don't you just make only five and then make the sixth one? Well, I would rather have all six ready to go and see what they look like. You know. I know, it's kind of weird. I know, maybe I'm weird. I don't know. Okay, here. Now you see this tape here is coming apart, right? That's what came apart. So I would want to make sure I have handy dandy tape there just to tape it down so it stays in place. Not that it's a you know, national disaster or something if it, it's not there. It's just that that's my preference. Okay, so let we put on nine. Let's go to ten on this side. Yeah. Now this one comes together very quickly. Okay, so now let's go so between eight and ten. There. Right off. There. And then you fold it back out of the way. You pull all the loose threads that somehow have magically appeared. And you get good coverage. What I like about this one. This one's good coverage. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, you trim for... 12 and 13, and you know that you've got them done. I don't create a great deal for the pet bed, but it is there. Oh, maybe I need to not cut first. Okay. 
I only got two pieces left, so what's going on there? Yeah, this one was fun. This one goes together pretty quick. Okay, here now. Let's do 12 first. Just to say that we're doing it in order. And you've got good coverage on both sides. Press it down. There. And <laughs> now, because some are some of you are also having printing issues where you're out like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch or something. Um, as long as it's all the same printer that you're printing from, it shouldn't be a problem. It really shouldn't. So, just a quick lesson on because there's no sewing up, right? Like sewing the pieces together for this one. This one is comes together very fast, <clears throat> and there is there was a woman who actually did one very similar to this. That's all she did in her quilt. So what I do now is I line up my where I want to stitch. Right, that's where I'm lining up. So if I cut off a little bit of the black, so be it. So be it. And this is how quick you trim them. Line up all your quarter inch and cut off any excess. There you go. Now, okay, last, line it up, trim it off. Okay, now let's get, so that's what that looks like. Now let's get the other pieces. Okay. So that's what that block looks like. So let's get the other pieces here and I'll show you just very quickly on what they're going to look like. So the obvious one, of course, is you put all the blue to the center and you have stars that kind of give you a look like this, right? Very simple, very quick. And then you have to turn all of them. And it doesn't matter which way you go around the block. If you go around one direction and then you go down around the other direction, um, you end up with the same block spinning a different direction. So you end up with this rather eclectic looking block. I can't even get it to line up here. Hang on. There. So just like that. And that's kind of an interesting little, little thing to do. Or what you do is you go like this and then you have this look now this is still a hexagon but it's not as pointed and you still have a very different block right and you have kind of like a green path running through the blocks now it doesn't look like it but these green paths do meet up and so when as you're sewing your quarter inch they will match, they should match accordingly, right? So anyways, let's get to our big ta-da moment here. Okay, ta-da, this is our big ta-da moment on block five of the Psychedelic Snowflake. In hindsight, I probably should have presented this one to you first, but it is what it is. So this is what one of the layouts look like. There's several of them, but you know, just so you know that there's lots of ways you can turn them around and have fun with them. Now this sample one, I'm going to recut and put into a trirex uh, triangle with, you know, the, to make it square so I can use it as an orphan block. So it's not going to go to waste. So some of you are kind of concerned that this block would end up doing nothing, but it is. It, it does do something eventually. So I hope you're giving this a try. It's not too late to jump in. Now, we did are putting a bonus block in, but it's dropping out after block six. So this is block five. So don't go looking for a second PDF down there with another with another layout. It's going to drop after block six. So and before the piece border. So you, basically, you've just got one more block to make. So we thought it would be a little bit of fun and have have this going on. So I hope it's covered with thread again. I hope. You have an absolutely amazing week and win bomb and chicken a few times. That would be good because I haven't won in like forever. So you take care until we meet each other again. Okay, bye. 
My husband and I would love to thank you for watching our videos and being part of our Facebook group and coming to our Zoom meetings. It's been so much fun on this little adventure that we've been on on YouTube. Um, I just want to quick, we are doing Zoom uh, so dates still coming up on the, and those dates are going to be listed in the show notes of this video for the next year we're making that commitment to you and we're having a lot of fun with those zoom so dates so please you know feel free to come in even if you're not a quilter and you just want to come and do some crocheting or or knitting or whatever yeah come on down we're good um the other thing is i still am doing uh speaking engagements for the quilt gals just to help them out to get back on their feet i am doing only um zoom uh meetings and I have a PowerPoint presentation that talks about all the free patterns that we have put out and will be putting out to the world. So they're more than welcome to take any of my patterns and use them for their charity quilts, right? So that's kind of important that they, they know that we're there. So if you are part of a guild, let your, uh, your programs person know that we're speaking for free over Zoom only. We're not doing any traveling or anything like that. Um, the other thing that I want to let you know is that we do in our Facebook group, everybody's sharing pictures and having fun and asking questions and it's, it's a, a hoot. And we do still have the room feature in Facebook that we can go so within. I, my admin person, Kathy, was able to set that up. It's no longer called Brenda's room, it's called Kathy's room, but we got a room. We do have a room working, so we're all happy with that. So if you get the opportunity to come join us on Facebook, that's great. We, we'd love to have you. So until we meet again, I hope you have an absolute, you and your family have an absolutely amazing weeks ahead. Okay, you take care. All right, bye.